keep playing the music. It was lovely. But yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Kawakan! In the left corner, weighing in at 115 ounces, Trina, she makes Titan slang look cool, Nisha at seven feet four inches tall. <laughs> Jeremy, don't make her cry in Fiore. Thank y'all for being here. Oh, oh, no. And in the right corner. <laughs> Yes, you may not know what kind, but he is indeed Asian. Todd Herbacol! I always get very self-conscious. I don't know if, it, if it's for you. I mean, y'all are pros. You've been doing it a long time. And you're probably over it by now. But uh, I get... You're like that. You don't get that. I would not get self-conscious. Well, I get self-conscious when I, I don't like being seen when I'm voice acting. Like, like oh, what I get I, that. You do you feel that or do you 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 don't mind it? Do you like it? It's a boy or it's like ooh, watch me. Like, do you <laughs> do you not like it? What, what's your vibe on it? I think if it's a, if it's like a, a voice that's different from my own, yeah, uh -huh. it's a little. It's you, a little you don't awkward. like it. No, it's not that I don't like it, it's just a little awkward. Or if somebody's like, can you remember this one line and say this one line, and you're like, I don't remember. It's like I get a weird amnesia. Yeah. It's like a stage fright. Booth, like, booth I don't amnesia. remember. Yeah, yeah, booth amnesia. You like forget the line. Band the name. Thing. Like, oh. okay. I was a good man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it hit or miss? Depends. Yeah, it depends. Okay. Trina? Yeah. I think when people, like, with Sharon, when people are like, oh, do the line, do the thing, do the line. There's like, a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure, yeah. and it's immediate. They're like, oh, you remember that show that you did 15 years ago, and you were that one girl who's girl A? Like, say her thing. And I'm like, that's that. This is... But when you get, even if it's a character that I know very well, like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm going to mess this up, and then I'll, like, leave and go, oh, that was the line. Yeah. And you forget it. Or, like, Come right on. before you fall asleep, you're like, oh, I remember what she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But... So, so basically, sometimes in the booth, especially now that we record remotely a lot, um, a lot of times we're, we're not seen when we record. Sometimes we are. I, I, there are times that I'm recording and um, we'll be on Zoom, typically. Zoom is like the, the heavy hitter of remote Everybody recording. Like Zoom. Skype's like, eh, Zoom, that little thing. <laughs> we're not going to change anything about our setup at all. Meanwhile, Zoom is like, da 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 and everyone's like, I love Zoom. So when we're on Zoom, there are times when we're recording that they want everybody on camera, if it's a group record, meaning like, so with anime and video games, typically we record by ourselves. And with uh, original animation, like for, like like a Kung Fu Panda, we'll all record kind of as a, as a little group if we can. But your camera's on, uh, on the Zoom, of course, as we all have done. Um, but when I record, I turn my camera off, and then they go, oh, oh, did we, did we miss you? Did we miss you? And, and I have to tell them, like, I don't like to be watched when I record. Like, don't, don't watch, watch me. me while I act. Like, there was this thing I was doing, I was doing this thing in, uh, uh, for, um, over at uh, Roundabout, and so at some studios they have the big glass to where you can look through, the bulletproof glass, you know? Yeah, do, don't you feel like you're an exhibit? At a well, here's what I do. So if the glass is right here, and the mic's right here, I step up, I do my, you know, whatever the line is, <laughs> and then I step back, you're a treat. Yeah. and I don't, I don't want them to watch, it's like a zoo exhibit. Yeah, like, no, I come out for the biscuit, and then I go back in. <laughs> that, that's what I do, because I don't like, but I come across as kind of, Dick, probably, <laughs> because like in between, I'm not seen. So like the director, the director sees me perform and then watches me go back, and then I do. Because some people are in the booth and they're very like, 
they love everything, they love everyone, they love talking, they love chatting, they want to know everybody. See, I sound like a dick right now. <laughs> I, feel like so, it's, I feel like it's different modes. Like, cause there's, I have one director tell me when I first started working as a voice actor, he's like, you can like talk to us and ask us questions. And I was like, Oh, well, then you were coming across. No, I was just, I would do my, I would do my lines you were and then I would just be silent. You're a dick. In between. So I terrified, and I was, if I asked anything, he'd be like, she is off topic. And she's not ready to work. She's not yeah. getting enough lines done. And so then, then they're like, okay, Talking a bit too much now. I was like, well, you said it. Oh, they, 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 they give you the thing of like, all right, well, let's get back to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 like, all right, let's get back to. I just told you how my, my dad uh, killed half the household and then turned it on himself, but yeah, let's get back to work. Great. <laughs> um, true story. But uh, so they, so then you switched it, and now again, it's like you're. you're yeah, you gotta, it find, the, you gotta find, the you belt. find the group. And there's also some. There's also some projects that you'll work on where they're like, we've got to get the line count done, and they're like, we do not have time for any check. I worked on a, on a project, so what Say the line, next line, say the line, next yes. line, and you do that for like four hours, they'll be like, next line, and you're like, uh, I'm going to kill you, and then the next line is like, I love you, like, I love you, and you like, finish the session, you're like, I have gone through a roller coaster of emotions, I want a nap. Because yeah. uh, your brain doesn't know the difference. Yeah, you're just like you're just like going, and but you emotionally have to be present for every single line. So you're just like you take enough time to be like, you don't even read through the line most of the time. You're reading through it for your first pass. So yeah. You get two takes. So you're like, what am I saying? What is the emotional note? All right, now let's go into the next pass. And you're like, man, I'm I'm gonna be exhausted after those sessions. My well, favorite about those sessions is when it's like. You're, you you have the line and you're like, all right, yeah, we're, we're going at a good clip, like, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going, yes, this is wonderful, I'm really enjoying myself, I'm going through all the emotions, this is wonderful, and then it's like, kill him, and then it's like, but actually it's like, ooh, it's, it's more like emotional, like, kill him, please, so it's like, kill him, and then they're like, that's like a little bit more murder, it's like, kill him, and it's like, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. like, it, I just, no, it's true, it's yeah, so, like, even just talking about it, I'm anxious. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and so because, like, who am I? <laughs> and that's the difference I feel like, it, and, and for those of you that, that uh, may be in the VO world, may not be, uh, there's a different flavor for each style of acting. So voiceover yeah. acting is different than on camera acting, that is different than stage acting. And so all of those have their little And little even then, flavors. different directors yes. have different needs. So you might be working on anime, but then this one director doesn't like to give you a lot of context for the scene. They're just like, I want you to kind of feel through. And then some people are like, I'd love to give you context. I'm like, I would love to know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But then some people are like, no, I kind of want you to find your way through and say the lines for the first time. And then I'll give you some direction if I feel like you need it. So you, like you said, film acting very different from stage acting, but then you have different directors that have different styles within that. So. Usually that first session, I'm like, it's like the first day of school. <laughs> Who are we and how do we like to do things here? I don't know what's going on. I, I've thought about it with voiceover. Voiceover, we are the session players if we were musicians. So the session players, like, Jeremy's gonna slap the bass. She gets in there and she plays bass on Alice Cooper's album. And then she goes and she plays bass on Creed's album. And then she goes and plays bass on, you know, Chris Stapleton's album. So yeah. she doesn't know all the music. She, she, that's why when people are like, what was your favorite line from Oron when da 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 happened? And I'm like, I'm just trying to figure out how to kill someone, right? Because apparently the way I said kill you wasn't right. <laughs> like, so, you know, it, 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 there's a lot that we're juggling at the same time, the you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, so I feel like with, that's where a lot of some of the anxiety comes from, I, I think, yeah. a little bit. And it comes out through being talkative in the booth or not talkative or shying away when, you know, when it's not our time to say a line. Uh, there's a lot going on, and I think that leads into when someone's, that's why you hear so many different answers when people are like, how do I get into voiceover? It's like, well, yeah, if you, there's, there's a whole laundry list of things that, that all feed into each other, but there's not one linear path to it, I feel No, like. not at all. The only thing yeah. we all have in common is acting classes. And not even the same acting classes, uh, although I think we all take a myriad of acting classes. Anytime somebody's like, oh, I took this one class, it's new and it's different. We're like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. Sounds great. I mean, I, I think honestly it's not even about, it, it, it's about experience, but it's not even so much about talent. It's not about talent, really, especially now. It's not about talent, because if you think about it, is McDonald's the best burger in the world? 
No. But there's a shit ton of McDonald's everywhere. And you know McDonald's, but it's not the best burger in the world, but it's everywhere in the world, right? That's like this. There are people that we work with, I won't say names, later I might. <laughs> They're not very good behind the mic, yet they work all the time. Oh, there are people that aren't great at it? Yes, there are people that are not good at it, and, and they work. But there's some people also that, because you've directed too. So I directed these bad people, that's why I know. <laughs> Very minimally. I don't know if you've directed at all. But you've like, dealt with them. Come on. Listen, listen. But there's some people that like, although that was a great performance, and then when somebody will say they're really, it, it, they're, it's hard to get that in the session, but it came out great. Yeah. But you don't, you because everybody has a different process. So if yeah. somebody like is maybe more uh, has a stage background, then you have to know how to direct that person. And if you're a director who, you know, who used to working with other voice actors, they're not good. Yeah. 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 Oh. They, it, that's okay. There are people that are good and there are people that are not good. Ian Sinclair was terrible when I first worked with him in Claymore. I almost fired him, but now he is amazing. And he's great. But see, if, if but see, I, he, 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 yeah, I almost fired him. When he first started, is when he first started, I know. I know. <laughs> but, 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 but look at his growth. He's amazing now. If, if I had told him, you're fantastic when he first started, he would have quit his growth. He would have been like, well, I'm being told I'm fantastic. And he wouldn't have grown to where he is now. So yes, I may have given him a little cayenne pepper in his dish, but guess what? <laughs> now he's fantastic, right? He, he isn't born knowing how to do it. Uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen isn't born knowing how to play guitar. It's a magic trick. You see the finished product. You see the guitar solo. You don't see the hours of practice. And it's okay that you need to practice. Do you, how many people watch football? Do you think those football players just hit a certain place and then that's it, they never train again? No, they have coaches. They have physical trainers, nutritionists. They those are the trainers. They get Bingo. <laughs> so we're good. Yeah, yeah that's okay. they, so they get better and they grow and they learn and then on um, you know the, the, that's the thing that's why it's okay because as we all say at various times in social media when we're feeling flowery and poetic we'll say always learn always try harder and always you're 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 good enough you be your best self well you be your best self means you gotta train yeah no you do you always have to grow and learn so yeah Ian sucked at the beginning oh, and no, I just now. I got it like I. <clears throat> So we are recording, or are we not? Sure! Uh, I, I, I just, was tell, I I mean, tell no, you. No, no, just for the record, like, I didn't know where you were going to go with that. And I love Ian. He's a, hey, he's a great guy. We all love Ian. Yeah. Yeah. But I also realized, like, I'm not wearing a mask. So whatever that recording was, when you were like, Ian, what's the worst? I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be a just, gift. No! <laughs> Put the mask on and post. That would be great. Like, <laughs> I think it was like, Todd, Todd, yeah. Todd, Todd. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. I just didn't know where we were Because if, if, you watch, if you watch a show like, we're, you know, the Mrs. H and I are watching Hell's Kitchen right now. By the he calls you Mrs. H? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so Those? cute. I know. Well, it's because she's cute. So the, the chefs, where they start, to where they end up is is universe is different, right? That's the, the, chefs point of the show. At, that's right. But but the chefs at the end are much better than the, than how they started at the beginning, right? They wouldn't have gotten to that point if Gordon didn't say, "You messed up here, you messed up there, you need to fix well, that, yeah, you need that's to do part that." Of, right? That's part of the job. Like yeah. that's when we that's have right. vision for stuff and we don't get something. Sometimes it's like it wasn't the right fit. You were a great actor, but it wasn't the right yeah. fit. Sometimes you see who got it and go. Oh, I could work on this, that, and the other, and totally. you're inspired to go back and totally. take some classes or Absolutely. change. And also, you find as you get older, um, you've got a shift in how you present yourself. Like when I was a kid, and then I turned 13, I had to reinvent from what I was auditioning for things yes. when I was five. So I had to take different classes and prepare for different skill sets. And then it happens again when you're 17. You like reinvent over and over again. And each time somebody goes, Yeah, no, I was working. I was. I'm working a lot. Well, you're going to have to reinvent and come up with a new yeah. character, a new skill set. And that's why you have to really love doing this because the learning does not stop. Yes. And you're going to keep getting told, like, 
not great, or like, you could do this differently. And sometimes it's off base, or it's just for that role, but sometimes it is meant to help you, and it will make you better, and you have to know, is this uh, like what makes me unique, or is this, I can really grow here? Because there is a difference. Yeah, and, and that's where it gets into the nuance of like, how do you get into voiceover? Well, there's so many little layers. Passion is not enough, also. Passion's not enough. Passion has no boundaries. So you need more than passion. It's gotta be more than, I love doing it. But you have no ceiling, you have no base, you have no structure, and so you're just gonna be wandering you through passion. The tenacity too. And hoping, yeah, hoping that's gonna happen. So it's all of those things. So that's why sometimes when people are like, how do you get into voiceover? I'm like, Ian wasn't very good when he started. <laughs> and then I disappear into smoke. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, I like yeah. the analogy of you coming out for the biscuit and being like, Ian wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, it's been a pleasure. And, and honestly, you're like, I don't. Does Tom like us? He just says something. <laughs> Oh. Not him and, he and I just, I <laughs> and this, is, this is the only time that we really get to see each other is when we're doing panels as well. Yeah, yeah. That's the other question is people are like, do, do y'all hang out together? You record together. Do, do Natsu and Lucy hang out together? It's like, oh, we're here. We like never, I don't think we ever saw each other during the recording of Fairy Tale, like ever. Because it would usually, there's lots of lines for Natsu and Lucy. So it, it, I would probably be there for a full day and then you would be there on a different day yes. for a full day. So it wasn't like I would be leaving the booth and Todd would be coming in. That's not how that would work, because he would need a full day of recording and I would need a full day of recording. I so. would see Plu a lot. Plu well, is a quick yeah, session. Yeah, Plu is great. Mom yeah. was like, in yeah. and out, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's tricky. We see each other at conventions. That's really the only time. I really enjoyed this panel so far. I just have to say, I really enjoyed it. I am. I feel like I feel like hopeful and like it was surprising. There was some like excitement. Yes, it's like those quick rapid fire. This is so fun. I really enjoyed so many emotions. Well, and that leads me, Trina. That's a good thing because that leads me to my next I'm question. I'm so excited. I just I don't know where that, we're going. Trina, that leads me to my next question. If your home was on fire and you could only Whoa. take two things. <laughs> In the old school Willy Wonka movie, where we're on the little the little gondola and he's singing the song. Oh yeah. Like, we're going. Well, oh my gosh, this is actually very dark. Oh, that's cute. Oh, like that's exactly the same. Well, I mean, we were talking about fires in our bellies, uh, and so your, your house is on fire. You oh, can no. take two things from it. What are the two things you take from the house, and why? Do people are my people out of the house already? Because obviously I'm going to choose people. Not always. Would you not choose people? Because she's right there, man. No, this isn't about me. Of course I would choose her, but we've got a lot of people on this planet. If you could take two things from your house, what would they be? Two things. Two things. So the people, the people made it out. The people are out. Okay, the people made it out. The pets made it out. Cover that. Yo, the pets, absolute. Yeah. like I draw the line. Oh yeah. This is crazy. I like that we weren't sure the people were able to get out the door, but the pets were like, yeah, we're unlocking this. How many people have a relative in their home where they're like, don't raise your hand? You know what? Hey, get out, there's a fire. I said I told them, I told them to get out, they didn't get out. They, they're responsible for their own actions. Okay, so two things that you want to take from your home, what are they? Are you guys doing a panel tomorrow? I want to come back. This is so fun. I'm really enjoying myself. I mean, not the fire part. Fire or flood. So, oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! Like, do your loved 
loved ones die by burning to death or drowning to death. <laughs> no! Oh, sorry, sorry. One question at a time. Two things out of the house. Two, two things, things out of the house. Two things out of the house. Oh my god. Um, I would... Two things out of the house. Um, I would take my grandfather's belt buckle um, and... Yeah, everything else can burn. When did, oh. when did you get that belt buckle and how did you get that belt buckle? Uh, my grandfather uh, gave me the belt buckle. Uh, right before he went into the hospital, uh -huh. and it was like this big. It's like in Texas. Y well, y'all know you're, you're. I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's it's like this big deal, and, and he worked really hard to win this belt buckle. And he, it's not even like a fancy, cool. Like, he won it from a. Yeah, he won it when he was a kid, and it's like oh. it's like really old and like not pretty anymore. But I, it's just. Do you have a picture of it? No. Okay, so you grab that belt buckle. No, I never wear it because I'm always scared that something will happen and I'll lose it. So yeah, I just, yeah. That's Do you have it like in a shadow box or anything like that? Okay. I just have it in a drawer. Belt buckle, okay. What about you, Sherman? Two I things. I knew you were going to do this to me. You I, don't, oh. I don't know. Like, that's... Better hurry. I smell smoke. Oh. <laughs> if, if the people are out and the pets, and the pets are out. Pets, definitely. If there's, there's so many things that I love that it would be hard to decide, but if the people and the pets are okay, then ultimately, like, the rest of it's just stuff. Yeah. But there's nothing, what about one thing? Is there one thing where you're like, ooh, that is stuff, but well, I look, can't replace it, that. But that's the thing, like, what do you, there's a lot of things that would be like, oh, you know. Because you, you have all your pictures to... on your phone or whatever already, so people Well, I don't know, like, there's, there's, there's photo albums that I have, but I'm, I'm sure, like, my mom has a lot of pictures and things like that. Most of the things are, like, backed up on other things. Um, yeah, no, Jeremy like, Lee in a panel said, let all the pictures burn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't, but it, like, it's, it's hard to go like, well, which thing do I like more? If yeah. I had to pick one thing or two things, ultimately I would be like, you know, it's, I, it's hard. There's, the, there's like clothes that I have that I remember that I have memories with. There's like pictures that I love. There's books that I love. There's, I have posters that have been signed, like that I got from... Uh, from shows that I worked on when I was younger, and I have a bunch of like amazing art and pieces that people have made for me, and I have like all of my uh, all of the characters that I played on shelves. But I'm like, if I gotta pick two, what do you decide? Is this one is more important than anything else? Like, well, the people are okay in the well, the are fire okay. will decide for you because the fire is gonna be like, all of this is my favorite. I know. I, know. <laughs> I don't know if I could pick like one favorite and, and know if I'd be like, I let the rest of it burn. But you, I chose. Like, I would feel really bad about that. I would understand if my mom, like, if she, out of all her kids, if she was like, no, I'm gonna let Todd okay burn. Okay. But I'm an only child, so I'm like, this okay is weird. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what <laughs> so, now, you have some stuff signed. So that's the other thing, is I think sometimes people forget that we're fans of people and things, too. Yeah. What was your very first autograph that you got on something, and, and how did you get that autograph? Um, the very first TV show that I worked on, I was... Uh, was it Magnum P.I.? <laughs> <laughs> No, I worked on Walker, Texas Rangers. I was way off. I was, I was like seven and a half years old. It was like my first TV audition. Uh, and I, I got cast on the show and uh, Chuck Norris came over and was like so wonderful and so kind. And they had, I don't, if you worked on the show, they had like a merch truck. Like oh. they had t-shirts and they had jackets and all this other stuff. That's smart. And anytime that I worked on the set, like I, I cause you couldn't, I think, it was like three years. You had to wait till you could be on the show again, otherwise you'd be considered a recurring character. Oh, really? Okay, three years? Dang. Yeah, it was nuts. So I, I worked seven and a half, and then I worked when I was uh, 10 on a show, and then I, uh, on an episode, and then I worked on one of the TV movies of the week that they did. Yeah. So uh, I grew in that time, so I had to get a new t-shirt. And uh, my first autograph was Chuck Norris signed my script, and was like it was an honor to have you on my on your very first TV episode. He signed the script oh. and he signed my T-shirt. And I got to meet him at one of his convention appearances. He started going to conventions. He was at McAllen last year, and I saw him. And, and uh, we had the same convention agent, and he had said like, you know, I'll make sure that you get a picture with Chuck because uh, Chuck Norris's daughter is a fan of fairy tale. Mm. And so he was like, he wanted you to sign something for his daughter. And so I saw him in the green room and he was like, you look very familiar. I don't know. And, uh, and I said, I, I worked on your show. And he was like, the Christmas episode. I was like, 
How do you know these things? <laughs> because he's Chuck Norris. Because he's Chuck Norris. <laughs> like everybody's like, oh, he's like ultimate badass, which he is. But also, like, what a kind person. And every time I worked on the set, he was always very family oriented. Obviously, there were a lot of kids in the show, and your parents have to be there. My brother came to set one day, and my brother didn't care about any of the stars but he wanted to meet the weapons master and all the stuntmen. So he got a jacket, and his was signed by all the weapons master and stuntmen, and Chuck Norris like, walks my brother over, and he was like, this is Jeremy's brother, show him around. And he was like, what do you want to do? And Michael's like, I want to hold all the guns. <laughs> so they did. <laughs> so there's, like, there's a bunch of pictures of my brother, like at seven, like, holding all these guns. It's ridiculous. Reminder. Create Jeremy merch truck. <laughs> also, like, did you get? Was, were you only allowed to get something from the merch truck like your first time, and you just lied every three years? You're like, first time. No, I think I think we, I think we maybe they gave us like a shirt for being on the episode. I don't know, but I know I know I got like a like a Letterman jacket for the president's man, and that was like we got the whole cast to sign that. I want to say like we we bought it. Cause like I know my family would be there and they would buy shirts because I was a child. I have to have an adult with me. Uh, but they didn't care like how many adults you had. So there was times I was like, both my grandparents are here, my mom's here, my brother's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all here for moral support. See, there's a lot of people in the world. There's a lot of people. In the world. I love them all. Yeah, yeah. So I think that I think that was my my first. That's very uh, cool. You still have that. Yeah, it's at my parents' house. Very so cool. That's not that's not here. When you said things were on fire, it would be. Yeah, see, you've got another home, backup home. Yes. Okay. My cat lost my stuff is still in my parents' house. Oh, okay. Well, that's why you can't choose. Because you're like, oh, I got it over here. No, what would you choose? You get two yeah, things. You get what oh, you two things? Oh, Pets man. and people are fine. Well, the, the, I'm no longer a workaholic. I, I got rid of that a long time ago, actually. I feel like I did a good job you with did, that. You did, yeah. Right? Um, but, the, but the workaholic... I've seen, I've seen a huge change. Yeah. Well, because when she sees me, now I'm awake. <laughs> like, every time I'm just exhausted. Like, like, a couple years ago, on that plane yesterday, I would have been asleep. Grossly, disgustingly asleep. There was one time we were on a, a plane oh. coming back from a convention, and they put Todd and I on either side of the aisle. And we sat down, and I was like, man. Because I, I was going to fall asleep. He was going to fall asleep. But we don't trust. I'm like, he's going to take a picture and share it. <laughs> We spent the whole flight being like, go ahead. That was so hard. Go to sleep. Go ahead. Go that to sleep. That was so hard. Like, three hours later, like, I made it. I'm tired. Oh, when I fall asleep on a plane, it is gross. There's no way I would fall asleep on a plane if I knew Todd was on that plane. Oh. No. Yeah. I don't care if he's in the back and I'm in the front. Like, I'm not sleeping on a plane. Yeah. Or Sabbath, like, I, like, oh, Sabbath, no. no, no. Like, also, like, your phone, like, yeah. where's your phone? All the time with Sabbath. Yeah. Like, where yeah. is it? It's in my pocket. Oh, is it? Oh, he planted a decoy phone, and he has my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, yeah. yeah. So he, what would you would say? Either. I would say one of my guitars that, that means a lot to me and was is from a special series that, uh, from an artist that inspired me to learn how to play guitar. I would oh, say very, that. What artist? So, when I was starting off in college, uh, which, what year is it? So, like, three years ago, um, I learned how to play guitar, um, and the, the artist, and so Dave Matthews was really big at that time. He still is, I mean, he's still selling out everywhere. Yeah. But I was like, I want to learn how to play guitar, because his styling is so unique, and it's good finger exercising exercises for you. And so, I uh, went to Guitar Center one time, because I went to SMU in Dallas, and so right down the road is a guitar center, unfortunately, because I had so many guitars because of guitar center. And so I go in there, and he's got his own Martin guitar, like a, a, a edition guitar, Dave Matthews guitar. And I was like, oh my gosh, and as a college kid, I'm looking at it, I look at the guitar, it's beautiful Brazilian rosewood, and then I look down at the price, and I go, oh my god, no. Oh. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I never saw it again, because I'm like, there's no way I could afford that I can't there's that's crazy yeah and so then years later this thing called Bitcoin came along oh. and so I was like let me put a little bit into this Bitcoin and see what happens okay. just a little bit okay. and I and, and I put some some things into the Bitcoin 
And then the Bitcoin like popped off and it was like, wow, okay, all right. And so I was like, let me get out because Bitcoin's like this unregulated, like weird thing. And I'm getting too like worked up with it. Like every minute I'm checking it. So I, so I did, you know, I did okay. And I took some shekels out from what I had put in. Shekels. And then, uh, so from when I saw the Dave guitar to when I got out of Bitcoin was a handful of years, some years. Uh, because I went to, I was, I saw that guitar in Guitar Center before the iPhone even existed. I was, yeah, it was like three years ago. And so, <laughs> and so then I just happened to look on eBay. And I was like, let me just, I don't even know why. I don't know why. And I just typed in Dave Matthews Limited Guitar. And there was one. And so I was like, let me buy this MFR. And so I just, the just the right amount of with, the, with the Bitcoin. Yeah. And I bought it with the Bitcoin Amazing. and it came. And uh, I haven't played it once. <laughs> because, because I'm like, it's kind of like it's a belt buckle thing. It's like, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah, to, yeah, you know yeah, what sure. I mean? And it was in perfect condition. And that was my, and I just love it so much. I, I don't want to play it. I kind of want to play it, but then I'm like, I don't want to hurt it. You want to look at it. You want to look at it. Yeah. So that's one thing that I would save. The other thing that I would save is, um, oh man, two things I get to save? How lucky am I? That means I knew that fire was coming and I didn't try to put it out. But, uh, <laughs> the other thing to save is, oh man, I think I gotta go, I think I need to go Xbox because I'm right in the middle of some games that I don't, <laughs> I really don't want to lose the progress. <laughs> Uh, and all my photos are digital. Oh no, there's a shirt that I would save because my problem is, is, is when I buy a shirt, I need to buy like a collector. I need to buy two because I buy one shirt and I'm like, this shirt's gonna last forever. But well, the problem is what happens when you wear the shirt a lot, right? It tears. It tears, that's why don't wash the shirt ever. <laughs> no, uh, you wash it and then it becomes threadbare and then you, you need another one but you can't find it because you're like, oh, I got this shirt when I was in college and yeah, it was only three years ago but the shirt, I can't find it anymore. You know, so yeah, that's what, that's what I would lots do. Lots happening. Yeah, lots going on. Lot going on. Years, yeah. I mean, look at The Last of Us. I mean, the time change, there's so much going on. So that's what I would do. Now, speaking of things, oh I'm so. Uh, I don't know where we're going. Speaking, I told you it's just like that scene in the movie. Uh, speaking of oh. movies. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So here, here's the deal. So you're, you know, there's a lot of crazy weather going on in California right now, and it's pretty cold here in Texas. And I know that I, mean, I remember from being in Texas that if it snows like one half of an inch, everything shuts down. down and Armageddon <laughs> takes place. Oh, so you've got your head and you're on the way to a session. Okay. okay. And it starts snowing, and then and then you hear the the, the town siren like. <laughs> and they're it's not the town siren. Sounds like. That's what I remember. I remember it sounds like that. But they're shutting down everything. Right. And so now you have a free day. Right. What are you gonna do on your free day, Trina? What would you do on your one free day? You don't have anything to do. You can do whatever you want on that free but day. But there's a storm coming. You just said. That yeah. limits what you can do on your free Well, no, everything, you're in a bubble to where wherever you walk, like, let's say it's snowing right here, in your bubble of free day, now it's all beautiful and sunny. This is the weirdest <laughs> game I've ever played. So, like, if you wanted to go to, like, Super Target, maybe it's closed, but when you walk up to the doors, it's open. And you can there, you so, what would you do on your free day? I like that, hypothetically, in your mind, if I had a free day, I'd be like, Super Target. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... All the employees just magically appear. Glenn is a yeah. bitch. <laughs> That's an excellent. What would you, look, I, I? I need some time. Yeah. What would you do what, on your what day? What would you do on your free day? Oh my gosh, on my free day? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the problem. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to unlock certain weapon skins on Call of Duty, <laughs> and it is hard. You know what I'm talking about? How many people play Call of Duty in here? How many people have gold skins unlocked? Wow. Mrs. H has gold wow. skins unlocked. She's good on that Chimera. She gets in there. She's at the top of that leaderboard. That's why we mute other people on there, because you don't want to hear some of the unholy things they say. <laughs> And when they hear her voice on the on the talk, it gets a little it gets a little spicy on there. Yeah. And so we just mute everybody. 
Yeah, oh yeah, she's dealt with it all the time. That's why she's a, she's a BB. She is a, she knows how to handle herself. Uh, oh! <laughs> I knew that. And so, um, actually on my free day, here's the funny thing, and, and I think we all do this. It's like you make your list of stuff you want to do to better yourself. Like, I want to read this thing, oh, or I want to learn how to, I want to learn how to play the that day. Yeah. yeah, and then it's like, sleep's like, Hey, boo. <laughs> and you're like, hi. <laughs> and then you wake up and you're like, God, it's dinner time already? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? It's so frustrating too when that happens. You're like, what a waste of this day! And everyone's like, no, you needed that rest. I'm like, enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like things I could have done better than yes. Yes. When you When you look online and they're like, all it takes is one minute a day, and your productive brain at 7 a.m. brain is like, one minute? I can spare a minute. Your 5 p.m. brain's like, one minute? Every day? <laughs> So I would try to tackle some of the things on my list. Now if you look at, if you follow The Rock on Instagram, this man never sleeps and he accomplishes all the things on his list, but I have a feeling that that's probably not the truth. Because if you take, and I've, I've talked about this with Mrs. H actually, if you take the things that The Rock says and you, you take out The Rock saying them in your head, and you just say, who, who does he sound like? Black Adam is the best movie, fantastic movie, number one movie in the world. Anyone who doesn't like it is a nasty person. Did he say that? He, he said number one movie in the world. We're gonna change. The, we're gonna change the DC universe. The best hero ever made, the Black Adam. Everybody loves Black Adam. I really am having a great time. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that, that's why it, that's why it was such an epic fall from grace when Black Adam oh. came out and was terrible because he had spent so much time saying it was going to be fantastic. It's okay for movies to come out and them to not be good. You're still a good sure. person. Thank you. Yeah, you're still yeah. a good person, okay. but movies do suck. Some movies suck. It's okay. Well, but somebody loves them. Even like like everybody's. You can always say like, oh, I hated that movie. And there's somebody's like, but I loved it. But so did, did that person suffer a head injury? <laughs> <laughs> Are they, I didn't even see one. Is it more yeah. yeah, so maybe yeah. maybe we would like it. You won't. <laughs> it's in the house that burned down. The last house. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Then. Yeah. Some movies are just not good. That's all right. Some movies are not good. Oh, man. But everybody, yeah. everybody has different opinions. That's why there's so much different, like, Entertainment. Human Centipede 3 is not good. <laughs> also, I haven't seen it, so it wasn't How many people have seen Human Centipede Part 3? Is there that was a trick question. You're supposed to say no, I've never seen it. <laughs> I can't believe five people raised their hands to that. <laughs> it really exists. Oh, yes. Oh. It does, well, right? There's, there's three of them? There's, yeah. many, there's many people that hate the room, and then there's many people that oh, love the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. So when when uh, movies like that, sometimes we sometimes we dub. Like when we first started dubbing live action movies, does anyone watch live action dubs like for K dramas or anything like that? So you see some of those dubs like Squid Game. There was a, a, a dub of that, etc. When we first started on dubs on live action dubs uh, at Funimation. It was a very different universe from what it is now. So now what it is when you do live action dubs, you get like, it, let's say it's a movie. You get like two weeks to do it. And you get, you can have as much cast as you want, and you get to go and meticulously work on it, and it's great. When we first started doing live action dub movies, you had three days to do the entire thing. It's nuts. You remember those? It was those? really quick. Yeah, remember, I, like when remember those. I was working with Zach, no, with Tyler. On a, on a movie, and it, we had to move so fast that typically how it works when, when these pros are dubbing is that they show you the scene first so you can see what happens, right? So you know who's, who laughs, who smiles, who fights, who punches, who dies, who burns up in a fire. And then, <laughs> and so, then when it plays... You laugh for a lot of those live action movies. That, that, a lot that, of that fire. <laughs> really yeah. easy to start a fire. Um, and so, they, so you can see how they move, and so then when you come in and do it, then you know where to, to put the words and such. And so when there was a fighting scene with this particular movie, we were having to move so fast 
than I didn't even preview it. Yeah, yeah. And these martial arts films, it's like a four minute fight scene. <laughs> and so I was just like, all right, let's let's go back and fall back on the knowledge of growing up watching martial arts movies, and we would just go in and do it. And so we, we got to work on a lot of live action dubs right now, and it's been cool to see that not only with live action dubs, but anime dubs, that it's, that it's grown from being this niche thing at Funimation yeah. to being on like Hulu, yeah. HBO Max, Disney Plus, yeah. et cetera. For so sure. it's been nice. Now for you both, have you seen, has that, the, the vast amount of anime that's out there now, have you noticed that you're still doing your thing steadily or has it been like way more than you can handle or is it, has it not changed? Has it been the same flow in terms of you going in and, and working on anime? Uh, like booking wise? Booking like wise, yeah. The actual work. Like just booking wise, has it, has it been just like a nice steady flow because there's so many places or is there working so on it, or is, get done, you know, or is it overwhelming, or, or is it? It's hard. I, I think it's harder to keep up in my brain, like with yeah. the characters. It's like, oh yeah, I, I love her. She's awesome. She's the she's the traumatized orphan, right? Oh. Um, oh. That's all of my characters. All of my yeah. characters are traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of orphans are traumatized. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. No, like there, somebody's like, oh this this character went through some really dark stuff. And, yeah. And yeah. she has a really hard past. Like, what's Trina doing? Um, but yeah, <laughs> Disney never called. Never called. Yeah. Um, that'd be cool. They have a lot of orphans. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I mean, there's a lot of people on the planet. They all, you know. They sing some songs. They sing some songs. Disney, if you're wondering. Um, yeah, no, I think, it's, I think it's definitely, it's it's still a good clip. It's, I think there is more time to explore the characters than there used to be, yeah. which has been nice. I mean, in L.A., it, it, I feel like um, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of the opposite like when yeah. we like when we uh, worked on the there was like not a lot of anime then there was a growing amount of anime yeah. and now and then there's like not no, a lot no, of anime at all because it's yeah. bad, it's all in house now yeah so like there it's uh, Crunchyroll is like we do it under our roof like we, I do stuff yeah. in LA like well not in LA but I do stuff for LA remotely like all the time there's been a lot of games yeah, yeah a, lot a lot of games, games. but lot not games. not as much yeah anime, anime. It's, yeah I uh, guess they're I can't remember yeah. <laughs> like, what, who am I recording for? Is this Atlanta, New York, or LA? Hi, I'm Trina. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah it moves true. so quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's uh, and I think that why that is, is because everyone kind of got their wish. I feel like se years ago, everyone was like, why can't we get anime faster? Why is it only five episodes on a disc and then we gotta wait six months until we get another one? Oh, I forgot about well, that. you got your wish. <laughs> now there's more than you can consume. How many people feel overwhelmed by how much anime is out now? Yeah, there's, it's hard to watch everything. You got your wish. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you, do you find that it's harder to latch on to, uh, to really love and invest in a show because there's so much more? Or do you feel like, no, it's fine, I can still love my shows? Or, or is it kind of like, oh my god, I finished the show, but I gotta get to the next one? Does it feel like that? A little bit, yeah? Like, like it's all more? I watched, I watched the same thing over and over, and then I got l lashed on. Like, oh. oh, yeah? So so through self-brainwashing, then you love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you feel like with shows now, do you feel like there is a show that, that hits the same way like an Attack on Titan? Or like a sword yeah, art or fairy tale or something like that. Do you feel like that? What what show would that be for you now? And if it's not and it's still those shows, well, that's, that's cool too. That's hard. That's hard to say because those shows have been around for years, decades. Yeah. So like for a newer show, like they don't have as many seasons or as many. Well, you but like to... for example, fairy tale's been around a long time, but my mom's only seen fifteen minutes of one episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that why you leave her in the house? <laughs> No, 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 no. No, because you, because then, no, 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 no. see, then, then, then they can pin that on me. What I do is I give her a map, maybe the map's not fully filled out, filled out yet, and she tries to find her way through, and I'm like, you couldn't find the way out of the house, I gave you a map. The people on the pets are okay, the people on the pets are okay, the people on the pets are okay. <laughs> Cut to, Cherry's in the padded room. Mom just needs to learn how to read a map. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
I mean, do you, do you feel like there are shows today that, 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 that hit the same feels like an Attack on Titan, like a fairy tale, etc.? No? That's all I needed to hear, thank you. Uh, fairy tale and Attack on Titan sword art rock. So congratulations hey! to you. Hey! if people didn't watch them, as we know. We've all worked yes. on shows where they were really great shows, and people just didn't watch them, and, and uh... That's on you. And, oh, 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 I think that people, there's more, there are shows that are coming out that people are excited about. I mean, how many Chainsaw Man totally. people That's are what I'm saying. Room, right? I think it's, I think uh, it's hard. One. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, one or two. I think it's hard to Same compare hand. a show that's been around for like five to ten years yeah. to a but show that has like six to ten episodes. Like, that's yeah. hard. You, you, you built up a relationship with these characters that's true. over the years. So to say, like, no, nothing really hits like that. Well, you don't have the, the legacy with yeah. these characters yet. Yeah. You'll have to see in five or ten years people. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. What year did Fairy Tales start? Um, it was the new old building, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's at least 2012. Yeah, yeah. 2012, because yeah. Oron came out in 2010, or 08? So, yeah, I was going to say it was probably 2011 or 2012. Okay. That's crazy. I know, is that weird? Vintage. And something <laughs> sort of came out. Well, no, I guess it, had, it has to have been older than 2011, 2012, because uh, Sword Art just celebrated 10 years. It did they? Yeah. Congratulations, Tried Sword Art. How many I, Sword Art fans in here? <laughs> How many Oberon fans in here? Yeah. Sorry about he Oberon. Me, so. <laughs> he is bad. That's a bad dude. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, that, but that's what Bryce and I were like, it's not 10 years. And then Bryce yeah. found the first convention that we did together and had a timestamp of like nine years ago. He's like, so it was 10 years ago. I was like, yeah, dude, you got kids. I that's know. How we, that's how we know how long it's been. They were not here when we started working on this show. Well, that's very impressive because I mean I think a lot of times and when the years go by like that, it, you know, uh, there everyone's like, oh, I feel so this, or I feel so that. No, that you're sur you've survived, you've made it, you've leveled up. I mean, if you think about it as a video game and you're playing an RPG, is your level one character as powerful as your level nine character? F no. Your level nine character is way more powerful. So if you've made it that far in life, you've earned it. Take a bow. Very nice to you and Bryce. Very nice. I mean, yeah. Very nice to go on for two months. So, thank you. 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 Thank Todd's gonna know before I am. He's gonna be in the booth and he'll be like, So when's your session? I'll be like, I Oh, I did do that to her. Like, well, do you guys want to see a sneak peek? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> Two, and then three. 
Uh, you know, I can't quite reach you, but, but shout. Huh? Uh, Oh, oh there's I you. got, Thanks. I got, okay, I have two questions actually. Okay. Uh, first one is actually for Share Me. Yes. Okay. Um, what was it like progressing from Persona 5 and going to the Trails of Cold Steel as Aaron Rowe? How did you get the role for that? Uh, I, I auditioned. I auditioned for both of those. Uh, they're both done at the same studio at PCB. Um, so obviously Makoto sounds a little bit different from Aaron Road. Um, I did not think that I would get to play such a cool, uh, grown, wise character, um, so I kind of took a risk with that audition with the voice, and they said, no, this is a fit, so it was very, very different from Makoto, but I love both of them so much. Okay, Our second question is actually for Todd, and a little request for Todd, though. Mm -hmm. um, Be what? careful. What was it like playing uh, the role of Kokonotsu, aka Coconuts, on Degazi Kashi? <laughs> And my request is, this was a couple of years ago, you sang a song to share me at a panel. Oh, I don't oh he's going to sing? It. Todd, will you sing? What's this? 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 An audience of me to see at Kawakan and San Antonio, we're here. I am love to see you all. Come and sign autographs with me. This is the best panel ever. I uh, and then Dr. Sakashi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that that was a that was a lot of fun because I didn't know about all those Japanese snacks. If you haven't seen Dagashi Kashi, uh, Dagashi Kashi, there are two seasons of it directed by Carl Phillips. And I flew back from LA to Dallas every week to work on that show. Did you get snacks? Each time. Well, I asked Colleen if we had budget to get snacks because I would film, I would film us tasting them yeah, and posting. Sure. Yeah. And I'll let you guess what she said about that budget. So I went and bought them myself, and uh, and then she was happy to partake. What then. was your favorite snack? Um. Uh, oh, there was this corn. Um, uh, how many people? You know Japanese snacks? Anyone know Japanese snacks? You know the one, it's like a, like a... It's like a giant cheese puff. Yeah, a gi yes, yeah. a giant corn cheese puff. Yeah. You know the one I'm talking about. It's delicious. Uh, that, that thing. But I bought a whole box of them, I dumped them on the table, and then everyone was like, come out and try all these snacks. And then, uh, so I learned a lot about snacks from that show. I wish that Dachi Kashi, because it's a comedy set in a snack store, it makes a perfect, like, horror video game. Uh, where like you eat one of snacks, you become a, a creature made of this snack, and then that would be great. I would love to see that. So you could work on that. Yeah. It's a D and D supplement already. Song with Jeremy a couple years is where you sang that song like in the Grinch where you said you're a mean one. You're a mean one. Oh, Jeremy. Everyone likes to think. You're small and you're sweet, but I really know the truth. You're a Grinch. Was that the song? And I was like, you're a mean one. This is what you like the boys with me. You, you get oh. Oh, 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 I like the other one. Yeah, this one, that was great. Yeah. I love, I have a little tiny Grinch. That you have a tiny Grinch with you. It travels where you go. You went to go. It up, but it was vanishing. You don't know where the hell did it go? And then one more question. Well, I, I was gonna go to Ash, but I think was it you? What was your question? Um, I know you said you do you voice you did voice acting for an, um, fairy tale. So I was gonna ask what. It, you watched the anime, what's your favorite one? What was my favorite, besides Fairy Tale, what was my favorite show to work on or just watch? Watch. My favorite show to watch well, was my very first anime, actually, that, but I didn't know it was anime because anime kind of snuck in and tricked me. It's like when I'm eating pasta and my mom's like laughing in the corner. I'm like, what's so funny about this bolognese? She's like, I, I chopped up broccoli and put it in there. She's like, you're eating vegetables. Like, I didn't know it was anime. And so I didn't know Transformers was anime. And then, but my favorite was that I knew was different was Vampire Hunter D. 
That was a cool one. But I didn't know, because I didn't know anime, I didn't know the tropes. I didn't know why the main female lead was doing so much thinking in the shower. Like, I'm like, what is going on here? Why, why is, this is where she thinks? Why does she think so long in here? But then I was like, oh, it's anime. Now I know that. But then I was like, why are we, what's going on? Why aren't we killing vampires? Um, but that was my favorite. And then Ash, I know you had a question. When will Natsu confess his feelings for Lucy? When will Natsu confess his feelings for Lucy? I have a feeling I've done it by saving her life 323 times. Can I not get one date? I'll even pick up the tab. We'll go to the Fiore Golden Corral in you can go to the chocolate fountain and get as much mac and cheese as you want. <laughs> what a, at the Golden Corral. Here they do. Did, has it, did they have the chocolate fountain? Oh, Tony says yes. Oh, okay. There's a chocolate fountain at Golden Corral. You're welcome. <laughs> but I think, I think we have to go. We have to go? Is that it? No. Oh, everybody's so sad. <laughs> well, I'm sad too. Yeah, hopefully. Yes, the 100 year quest, and I also want to find out what, what things you would take from your home. Um, when it's not uh, and so, also, I gotta tell you guys, you know where the autograph area is. You were voicing Natsu wanting to know what I would take from my house, it feels like you would break in and then take those. Oh. Did you? And then you can find them when the fire is happening. You've been reading ahead in uh -huh. my script of life. Trina's gonna be signing autographs, Jeremy's gonna be signing autographs. Go see them. Thank you all for being here, you're lovely. I can't, I just, I really enjoyed it. You should be a comedian at this point.